Hello and welcome to Let's Make Tracks episode 3. This week I'm going to show you my idea for the Hornby Diorama Challenge 2023. Last time I discussed baseboards, uh, modular baseboards for the whole layout and um, the potential to enter the Hornby Diorama competition. Now I made a start on the baseboard for my diorama, but um, I made some errors in measurement when it comes to the track. Pretty much I built this as my diorama entry, but um, as you may or may not have seen from the tape that's on the table, I need it a bit bigger. So this is kind of redundant, unfortunately, because I've put a lot of work into that. But never mind about that. Uh, so baseboard will probably come at a later date because quite frankly, I've blown the budget for this month when it comes to railways. So I have what I have, so I'm gonna show you what I have. So first off, this is my intended module size. Um, I think it's 74 centimeters off the top of my head. 74 centimeters long ways. Um, depth, it has to be at least 33 centimeters, but I don't mind it being a little bit more that way. But because I wanted to store this away safely in between uses, because this is going to be all nice and done up and the rest of it's going to look pretty barren for a while. So I wanted to find a box, a plastic box that I could store this in so it'd be safe. Uh, really useful boxes come to mind. But um, again, the size is are giving me a bit of grief at the moment so more on that in another episode i think anyway down to business so my diorama layout looks pretty bare so what i was thinking after looking around online for a little bit and seeing a couple of kits which basically turned the light bulb on i've decided to model my version of uh, tunbridge wells west which is a station on the spa valley railway uh, the main reason for that is because of the way their station is laid out. Now, their station is basically built around a grade-listed building, the old engine shed, which is a four-road shed, brick-built. Um, it has an asp I think it has an asbestos, or possibly aluminium, I don't know, there'll be a picture somewhere. Um, but I saw a kit, which I'm going to put up on the screen now also, that just struck me as very similar, although I did later see the differences between the two. But still, the inspiration was there and it stuck. So I bought this kit from Modelux. And before I bring it into camera, I'm going to have to apologise to the guy at Modelux because I've done some heavy, heavy customization to it already. I'm waiting for my second kit to arrive, which should hopefully be tomorrow, according to the website. But this is basically it so far. So you've got the four roads and what would have been open. Hang on, I've got the other bit here. So what would have been open doors, get into the shed, I basically bricked in. And you may have noticed the colour difference as well. I've used Railway Scenic's printable brick to basically wrap the thing. Uh, I'll try and put links to everything I've purchased down below. The guy does have a, his own YouTube video where he makes this properly. Um, it's a double O version that he makes, but it's essentially the same thing. So obviously this is TT scale. So this is going to sit around about here. Obviously, you got the lines going inside. So I've also picked up some Pico Flexi Track from Hattons. The reason I've used Pico, apart from the price, although that was also a factor, was because I wanted continuous rail joins going through this entire section. I'm not going to go into too much details about Pico's version of the track because that's been done um, by another chap. I can't remember his name off the top of my hand, but there'll be a card somewhere up here where he compares the Hornby track to the Pico track. So this is the focal point, I suppose you would call it. That's the main attraction. Yeah, why not? I'll plug this in. Right. So the next thing, not that I bought them in this order, but this is the order I'm going in. I purchased some 3D printed, printed platform sections. Now these I got from eBay from a store called 3D Plus. So in a pack, you get two sections like that, two end ramp pieces, 
and also step pieces, which hopefully all that's in focus down there, but basically it all fits together like that. That's something there. It's the thing about working in this scale, the slightest bit of grit and everything's not level. So my other two sections and the end one there. So these will be glued together in a what I hope will be a perfectly straight line. But um, you've also may or may not have noticed the very shallow gap I have here. And again, that's drawing inspiration from uh, the actual Tunbridge Wells platform where it wasn't a station platform to begin with. They basically had to build around this structure that they had because the station buildings would have been somewhere over there. And when the line closed down, the track was lifted and the station was basically turned into a restaurant of some kind. So that's over there. The Tunbridge Wells Railway basically stops here where this tape is. That's the end of the line. There's a, this is basically a run round loop. I did a bit of surgery on these pieces. I basically cut it in half, glued them together and that theory fits. And the other thing, I've got to be very careful because I've got a loop of tracks set up and that's very close to the edge that side. But this all should if my plan holds water, that will fit like, there we go. It's gonna continue all the way down and probably on the uh, connecting modules, I will put the ramps just to blend the scene in a bit. So also from 3D Plus, they do gift pack, which is basically station furniture. So should have planned this a bit better because I've got more sprawled out over here. Bear me one second. We get these bits and pieces in the station gift pack, he's called it on his store. Um, I, again, links will be down below. So first thing I'm gonna cover is tiny little TT gauge benches. Now, I'm not sure if the camera is gonna be picking that up from how I've set up, so I will be including close-ups. Right, next thing in the pack is these bins, which I'm gonna just put next to the benches for now. So three benches, three bins, the other thing we got in the gift pack is some electrical boxes. Two of those, so I'm just gonna pop them there for now. Then we have two vending machines. Now, I'm not sure where I'm actually gonna use these myself. I might try and do an internal look at the station building. Right, next thing on the list, I'm gonna try and stand these up right. We got a fire bucket attachments for the wall. Right, next thing in this pack, we have a letterbox. Edwardian letterbox, I'm assuming, which again, pretty good. I mean, I might need a little bit of paint just to fill in the letterbox hole and maybe do the top, possibly the bottom, just to give it that little bit of extra. But that on its own, I could quite happily accept that the way it is as well. It's pretty good. And the last thing in the gift pack is this old fashioned telephone box, which again, I think is pretty well done. So yeah, I'll probably be getting one more of these packs, mainly for the benches and the bins, but you can never have enough fire buckets around a theme railway, can you? The next piece of station furniture I got from, looking at my list, MS Models Chesterfield. Now he has produced, along with other models in various scales, this platform shelf, which by itself probably doesn't look like much. I've cut the back wall out of mine. This is to imitate my version of the new Tunbridge Wells West stage, because they have uh, a new canopy going over their door, which they built. So that's that piece there. What else we got? Now that is a figure from More View Models. I first learnt of their existence from a fellow YouTuber known as Peachy120, which I have to thank him for because I would never have known or found out about them otherwise, and quite frankly, they're amazing. Um, this is from the Loco Crew figure set. You get 12 all together. They come in two bags of sixes. Also from More View Models, I got locomotive boiler. Now, of all the 3D printed pieces I purchased, this is probably my favorite, but this is an extraordinary little piece. Um, I first saw it on another YouTube channel, um, that model railway guy, I think. He bought a double O version, and as soon as I saw it, I knew I wanted one. Would go probably somewhere over here in the yard, but um, you guys, I'll leave it on a larger platform so you can see it. Last piece of inspiration from the uh, Spa Valley Railway. In their engine shed, obviously it doubles up as their works, where they do all their maintenance and everything else. So they have loco inspection pits, basically running the entire length of the shed. And I believe they've got smaller ones outside as well. Pico do a double O H O loco inspection kit. Obviously it's for the wrong gauge. However, 
I've done a little bit of titivating with my Dremel and a bit of uh, plastic glue and I've managed to make it fit into a TT scale piece of track. So now that I know that it can be done and the rails do fit inside the chairs pretty well, they're quite compatible. Um, they're a little bit loose, so those will obviously go inside for the entire length. Oh, no, sorry. There was another one. This is from SR 3D Designs. It's a gantry crane, which they also have at Tunbridge Wells. Yeah, and there'll be precision engineering when it comes to actually putting all this stuff on the baseboard. But that crane piece does go from one end to the other. If I move it all the way to the right, there is clearance for a locomotive to still go underneath. I've checked. Right, so this is the plan. I'll give you an update on it next time. Hopefully we've made some good progress by then. Uh, baseboards at the very least, so that I know where the end of the world is. And then we can start really putting this together. Because, I mean, just as it is now, I am I mean, this is one of the first times I've actually put it together properly to have a good look at the way it's going to pan out. And I'm really, really happy. I mean, there might be a few titivations to get the exact position of everything, but I'm quite happy with everything at the moment. Thank you for watching Let's Make Tracks episode 3 and I'll see you again next time. Goodbye.